Good morning. Another trip to Coparts. This time, as you can see, up there somewhere, um, we have yet another Renault on the back of the trailer. This from a guy that said he would never buy another French car after the, I don't know, whatever Renault people wagon thing we caused a no end of grief back in the day. So, what have we got this time? It ain't a Zoe. It is electric, all electric. Uh, it's a 2012, bet you've never heard of this one, Renault Fluence. A what? It is uh, Renault's first fully electric car, I believe. Um, it uses the same sort of battery pack. I think it's got the same battery tech as a, um, as a Nissan Leaf. So the early Nissan Leafs. Now what that means for all you Zoe fans out there is the battery in this is probably shot, right? So Leafs, especially the early Leafs, um, that I believe anyway, after about 10 years or so, you're down to really crappy ranges, right? Like 50 miles or something like that. Lose sort of half their range. I believe this is the same tech. So therefore, um, this car, when new, would have had a range, well, uh, a hopeful range of about 100. Um, I would be amazed if it gets 50 miles now, but we'll see, right? Well, perhaps we'll see. Um, the car cost me, I think the winning bid was 375, 375 pounds, 350 pounds. I think I agreed with the seller 375. Um, so 375 pounds plus all the fees, right? Let's lest we forget Copa and their myriad of fees. So lock retrieval fee, um, fee for bidding online, fee for driving through their gate and using their gravel drive, I don't know, loading fees, whatever else, um, takes the total to about 600 and, about 650 quid. I'm also probably a day of storage into this thing as well or something like that. So yeah, 650 quid um, or thereabouts plus I don't know, 50 quid round trip in diesel. So I'm 700 quid into this car. It's a 60,000 mile example, many, many owners, all that kind of good stuff. Um, it says on the Copart listing, runs and drives. It's not got a category against it, so this is not an insurance job. I'm going to imagine that this car will have been part text or something like that. Um, so this will just be from trade, flogging it off. So I believe this was Renault's first attempt at an all-electric vehicle. It, um, I guess what they did is took one of their petrol diesel uh, model cars and um, yeah, slapped a battery and a, and a motor in it and away they go. It has some interesting quirks, this thing. Um, for starters, Renault UK only sold 16 of them. Um, they were very popular cars well, I don't know very popular is the right word, but they were they sold a lot more of these things over in Israel and Turkey, I believe. Um, in fact, the Israeli versions, I believe, um, they were the first electric vehicles to allow battery swapping. So the idea was you would drive around in your fluence and as your battery ran flat, you would pull into a little like garagey type thing and some technician would whip out the battery and stick you a new one in within a few minutes and off you go with 100% charge again. Interesting idea. Um, <laughs> it, yeah, didn't ever make that in the UK market um, and yeah, not really sure what the thinking was but whatever.
weirdness just here we have a charging port and it's one of those old things and then on this side we have a charging port <laughs> what all right well, I could get the boot open, just have to give it a good old wiggle. So we do have some charging leads. Um, oh, I wonder, let's see, as well, whether we've got locking wheel nuts or anything. Mm. So this is this great big box in the back. It's basically our battery. Oh, okay, yeah. Ah. Oh my God. Excellent. <laughs> that's so that's how. Yay! Lock and wheel not key. Happy days. Makes life a bit easier. Right. Let's see what we got in here. Shortly for a lead. Ooh. A couple of leads. Ah, no. Positive. Ah. Excellent, so that's what we wanted to see. So I guess we've got, we've got one for out and about, if you can find one of the sockets. And then this one, a granny charger. So let's have a bit of that action. Which side shall we go? Let's try the driver's side. nothing has no indication that anything is happening the car's completely gone weird well this is not good news um plugging it into the charger although it car said it was charging well the charger needs said it's charging the car is now dead completely totally non-responsive mm. okay well, i've just found the adb port a bit like the zoe it's just hidden behind a little plastic trim there so we'll plug in what do you think i think it's going to be able to find this thing so it's not liking the voltage Ooh. Oh dear. Okay. Well, we know the deal with 12 volt batteries in these things. I don't like that 7.18 volt, right? That is, that's not looking good. So I think first thing to do, we've got to go and get a battery for this thing. Speed centers, power supply. Mm. Mm -hmm. So based on that, I reckon first things a 12 volt battery. It's, it's a bit freaky that I've completely lost all power now to the car, um, just after putting in the charger. That's concerning. Um, where well, there's a master fuse that's now gone zapped or whatever. Um, it's strange because you'd think the 12 volt system would still be functioning. Uh, let's try and find a 12 volt battery and see where it is. Mm -hmm. I've got something living under here. Fail, zero percent. 
so it's saying failed 0% it's basically not very happy so I can nick a battery out of this thing because it's not using it at the moment We got life again. So, back in business, he says. Not sure how much business we're in. So what we'll do now, let's, let's let it do its checks. So we'll try again with the um, system scan. Now we've got a decent bit of voltage in the, uh, the car. Interestingly, this time we've got BMS, so that's good. So let's see. A lot's going on. Clear. Yes. So that seems to have sorted the wheat from the chaff, right? We've uh, we've got rid of all the sort of errors that are to do with the 12 volt battery being naff. Um, so now we're left with, I guess, what the real problems are with this car. Pop it back on. Have a little check. BMS. Okay. Move data stream. You got one of those nice things that say something like battery health. Oh, yes. Right, we have a 50% healthy battery. Ugh. Traction battery charge is at 26%. Yeah, we'll go with that. Traction battery mileage, yep. And our voltage is 365 volts. Lovely. Okay, so plug the charge and lead back in. Now we've got a 12 volt and charge remain four hours and we are plugged in these dials they look like they're little computery kind of things <laughs> but they're actually pictures <laughs> fascinating all right 405 it's actually gone up interesting all right i'm gonna leave this for a little while I'm going to go and have tea and cake. So the car's on charge and just reading from the 12 volt battery that we've nicked out the Feza and it's reading 14 and a half volts. So there is power coming out the battery charger into the low volt. So if I just knock the, let me just knock the power off our charger. Take it off charge a second. There we go. Let's see if uh, there we go, right? So now it's dropping it down. I'm hearing some clicking, creaking. So I don't know. I'm not really sure what's going on with this. Um, those errors would suggest it's, and the fact it had a flat battery would suggest would suggest the low volt system is not being charged properly but I googled the um, the error codes this thing's throwing and you get like nothing there's nothing about these cars i mean why would there be right there's hardly anyone around um so yeah i don't know really so i think what we'll do is give this thing a bit of a clean up a bit of a tidy up and then we'll take it somewhere that's got a bit bit of a better onboard diagnostic computer reedy jobby and plug it in and see if there's uh, see if there's anything a bit more interesting that this thing throws up code wise um, than what I'm seeing on my system. I can't clear those codes down. They're active. So if they're active, that means there is a problem. The problem being that I have no information whatsoever to go on on what these issues could possibly be on this thing. I have bid on so many of these things and won quite a few of them. I think I've won four so far, but not come to agreement with the seller for the price of them. Folks tend to want some pretty good money for these, and I don't know why, because no one's after them, right? Apart from it seems me. 
Um, but yeah, if we can get a battery, um, then we'll try and get this one going, do a battery swap on it. The battery in the um, effluent is no good for this thing. Uh, it's a completely different setup. It's more like a um, one of the uh, Nissan Leaf batteries, basically, in the effluents. So we will, um, I'm not sure what we're going to do with that. Muck around with it, do something with it. Um, so, um, so thanks so much for dropping in and uh, yeah, more to come real soon, hopefully. Hopefully, fingers crossed, uh, we can uh, secure a Zoe with a decent battery um, as a donor to this thing. Take care.